Good evening. My name is Justin Lardenois and I'm the chair of the Planning Commission. Welcome to the Planning Commission meeting. Please remember to turn off your cell phones. The parking validation machine for the garage under City Hall is located at the rear of the chambers at the top of the stairs. Following a roll call during summary of hearing procedure, we'll review how the public may provide comment during today's session. At this time, please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Uh, now we'll go to roll call. Uh, my name is Justin Lardenwa, I'm the chair, I'm here. Vice Chair Ronellis Wise. Here. Commissioner Barosio. Here. Commissioner Bickford. Here. Commissioner Cantrell. Here. Commissioner Casey. Here. Commissioner Garcia. Here. Commissioner Oliverio. Commissioner Rosario. Commissioner Tordios. Here. And Commissioner Young. Here. I believe that's nine present. And I also just want to thank all of your significant others for allowing you to be here on Valentine's Day of all days. Uh, summary of, so we'll go to the summary of hearing procedures. If you want to, okay, and so before I get into the, what's written in the script here, um, the city clerk and city manager's office issued a memo that as of February 6th, the city is no longer accepting public comment over Zoom at city council meeting and at boards and commissions, so that applies to tonight's hearing and moving forward. So we still accept input from the public in writing. Uh, you can email planning support staff at sandsaca.gov. And then also we accept public comment here in the chambers. Uh, anything else, Daniel, I need to cover there? Okay. All right, so if you want to address the commission, please fill out a speaker card located on the table near the audiovisual technician and deposit the completed card in the basket. There are also speaker cards in the back of the chambers and at the side entrance. The procedure for this hearing is as follows. After staff's presentation, applicants and or appellants may make up to a five minute presentation. During the public comment period, the chair will call out names on the submitted speaker cards and the order received from those members of the public who attend in person. As your name is called, line up in front of the microphone at the front of the chamber. For members of the public who attend by teleconference, the meeting technician will connect those persons who desire to speak to the commission so they may be heard. Generally, each speaker will be given up to two minutes for public, excuse me, generally each speaker will be given up to two minutes for public testimony and speakers using a translator will have up to four minutes. At the discretion of the chair, the time allowed to each speaker may be changed depending on the number of items of the agenda, number of speakers, and other factors. Speakers using a translator will have double the time allotted. At the after the public testimony, the applicant and or appellant may make closing remarks for up to an additional five minutes. Planning commissioners may ask questions of the speakers, and response to commissioner questions will not reduce the speaker's time allowance. The public hearing will then be closed, and the planning commission will take action on the item. The planning commission may request staff to respond to public testimony, ask staff questions, and discuss the item. If you challenge these land use decisions in court, you may be limited to raising only those issues you or someone else raised at this public hearing or in written correspondence delivered to the city at or prior to the public hearing. The Planning Commission's action on rezonings, pre-zonings, general plan amendments, and code amendments is only advisory to the City Council. The City Council will hold public meetings on these items. Section 20.120.400 of the Municipal Code provides the procedures for legal protests at the City Council on rezonings and pre-zonings. The Planning Commission's action on conditional use permits is appealable to the City Council in accordance with Section 20.100.220 of the Municipal Code. Agendas and all staff reports for this meeting may be accessed at the city's website. And then we'll go on to call to order and the orders of the day. Before I begin, I want to remind the Planning Commission members and members of the public to follow our code of conduct at meetings. This includes commenting on the specific agenda item only and addressing the full body. Public speakers will not engage in a conversation with the commissioners or staff. All members of the Planning Commission, staff, and the public are expected to refrain from abusive language. Repeated failure to comply with the code of conduct which will disturb, disrupt, or impede the orderly conduct of this meeting may result in removal from the meeting. This meeting of the Planning Commission will now come to order. I also want to note that Commissioner Rosario is with us. All right, so we'll move on to the time for public comment. Uh, this is the time when we can accept public comment on items that are not on tonight's agenda. Please fill out a speaker's card and give it to the technician. Each member of the public may address the commission for up to two minutes. The commission cannot take any formal action without the item being properly noticed and placed on an agenda. In response to public comment, the Planning Commission is limited to the following options. Responding to statements made or questions posed by members of the public, or requesting staff to report back on a matter at a subsequent meeting, or directing staff to place the item on a future agenda. And as I said earlier, at this time, we're only accepting public comment in person here in the chambers. I don't have any speaker cards for non-agendized items, public comment, but do we have anyone who's here to give a comment? Okay. We will move on. Uh, do we have any deferrals or removals from the calendar? 
Okay, we do not. All right, so we'll go to the consent calendar. Um, let's see, so notice to the public, there'll be no separate discussion of individual consent calendar items. They are considered routine, will be adopted by one motion. If a member of the commission requests debate, separate vote or recusal on a particular item, the item may be removed from the consent calendar by the chair and considered separately. The public may then comment on the entire consent calendar and any items removed from the consent calendar by the chair. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll get there. And so on tonight's consent calendar, we have item A, which is the minutes from our January 24th meeting. We have item B, which is CP 23-018 and ER 23-155, which is a conditional use permit regarding wireless equipment at 2399 Mossdale Way. And then item C, ET 23-01, has to do with easements at 650 North King Road. I've been advised by our attorney that this needs to be, needs to have a public hearing, so we'll remove it from the consent calendar. Uh, do we have any other removals from the consent calendar or a motion? Yeah, Vice Chair Ronald Spies? I have just had a couple planning questions um, regarding item B, CP 23. Yeah, go ahead. Um, the only question I had on um, sheet GN3, there was like warnings for whoever was going to be maybe working on it, and it was only in English, so I'd like that uh, to be like either in Spanish, and maybe Chinese, Vietnamese, or whatever. Um, can that happen? Staff, any commentary? And if we need a longer discussion, we can totally pull the item and have a presentation, but go ahead. Yeah, so um, Cameron G, Planning Project Manager uh, for CP23018. Um, it's not a planning requirement for um, uh, signage in different languages. It could be something that is imposed at the building phase when they do construction, uh, but it's not something that is um, included in our wireless uh, review policies. And just one other thing. In I mean, of course, just for safety reasons and because obviously we are such a large multicultural community and there's people, a lot of different ethnicities that might not speak English that are working on a cell tower. I mean, of course, I'd like to see that it would be in, in you know, other local languages. Um, and then there was something about an in-lieu fee for trees. And then I saw that there was obviously no landscaping required because it was, um, so I didn't know if they had paid an in-lieu fee for the trees. Yeah, for the trees, there are no tree removals with this one, um, so they would not, it's not an applicable um, condition. Oh, okay. For, yeah, for in-lieu fees. Okay, perfect. I also just want to note Commissioner Oliverio is with us. Um, okay, so do we have a motion to approve item A and B? A motion to approve Second. items A and B. Okay, there's uh, an item, or motion from Commissioner Casey to approve items 4A and 4B from the consent calendar, a second from Commissioner Oliverio, and before we go any further, do we have any public comment on either of those items? This is uh, the minutes and the conditional use permit for the wireless tower. Okay, looks like we don't, uh, and don't see any other hands up, so we'll go to a roll call vote. Vice Chair Nellis Wise? Yes. Commissioner Barosio? Yes. Commissioner Bickford? Yes. Commissioner Cantrell? Yes. Commissioner Casey? Yes. Commissioner Garcia? Yes. Commissioner Oliverio? Yes. Commissioner Rosario? Yes. Commissioner Tordios? Yes. Commissioner Young? Yes. And myself, yes. That is 11 yes, zero no, and zero abstentions. So that passes. And as I mentioned earlier, um, item 4C ET 23-01, we'll need to have a public hearing. So do we have a staff presentation for that item? Good evening, Chair and members of the Commission. Uh, I'm Patrick Kelly, Supervising Planner, here for Angela Wong, the Project Manager. The applicants have petitioned the Planning Commission to release a 1991 covenant of easement over the property for ingress, egress, and emergency access because ingress and egress is no longer required. Emergency access is still required, however, so a new covenant of easement for emergency access only is proposed to replace the old covenant. The fire department has reviewed the new covenant of easement and determined it is adequate for the required emergency access. The petition itself should have been included uh, as an attachment to the staff report, so as has been provided to the commission earlier today. 
and I'll also read into the public record for the hearing the essential information for the petition. The petition states it is for release of covenant of easement for site development at 650 North King Road, and the applicant is shown to be BTC3, San Jose Logistics Center Limited Partnership, and the petition was signed on April 19th, 2023. Staff recommends the Planning Commission grant the petition to release the 1991 covenant of easement and accept the proposed replacement covenant of easement. This includes staff's report. Thank you. Um, do we have any public comment for this item? I don't have any cards, but. Okay, um, any commission discussion or a motion? Motion to approve the staff recommendation. Second. We have a motion from Commissioner Tordios and an emphatic second from Commissioner Oliverio. If there's no further discussion, we'll go to a roll call vote. Commissioner Ornelas Wise? Yes. Commissioner Brosio? Yes. Commissioner Bickford? Yes. Commissioner Cantrell? Yes. Commissioner Casey? Yes. Commissioner Garcia? Yes. Commissioner Oliverio? Yes. Commissioner Rosario? Yes. Commissioner Tordios? Yes. Commissioner Young? Yes. Myself, yes. 11 yes, zero no, zero abstentions. Item 4C passes. Great. Move on to item five, the public hearing. Our first item is item A, ET 23-003, which also concerns a covenant of easement, this time at 525 North Capitol Avenue. Do we have a staff presentation for this item? I do. I'm gonna wait for. Sure. Just bear with us a moment while we get the presentation up. Um, while that's getting set up, um, my name is Myra Blanco. I'm a project manager with Planning, Building, and Code Enforcement. And I'm here to present um, a brief presentation on the petition for release ET23-003. Um, I would also like to read into the record the application for the petition. This was provided to the commissioners and is now part of the public administrative record. Okay, and I see that it's up now. Um, so I also want to preface this by saying that we don't get a lot of these types of petitions, so I thought it might be important to provide some relevant uh, background information the project site is located on the west side of North Capitol Avenue, approximately 175 feet south of Jamelli Way. The 0.97 gross acre project site is vacant except for a concrete pad and was previously approved as a commercial office space under a larger mixed use signature project known as the Orchard. The plan development zoning and plan development permit allowed 188 residential units, 108,000 square feet of commercial space, and a public park. The project site was envisioned as a commercial space with a surface parking lot. Next slide, please. As a condition of approval for the plan development tentative map of the Orchard Project, the applicant was required to dedicate on the final map public use easements, including the subject shared parking easement. A covenant of easement for shared parking involving parcels two, three, and four was recorded in document number 237-72246 on October 10, 2017. The intent of the shared parking easement was to maximize the available commercial parking on parcels three and four for the townhome residents during non-business hours consistent with General Plan City Design Policy CD 1.10, which promotes shared parking arrangements between private uses. In other words, the parking would serve as courtesy overflow parking and was not 
required to address deficiencies with the overall project. In total, across two non-contiguous surface parking lots, as shown in the shaded areas on the slide, 109 parking spaces were to be set aside for shared parking for the benefit of the townhome residents, 81 of which would have been on the project site or parcel four. However, the project site was not redeveloped with a commercial use and has been vacant since the Orchard project was approved in January 2017. The parking easement was conveyed to the City of San Jose because an easement must involve at least two parties. At the time of the subdivision, there was only one party, the owner of the original parcel, and thus the city became a party to the easement. San Jose Municipal Code Section 20.110.030 outlines the purpose of easements, which include parking, ingress and egress, and emergency access. Those purposes are not necessarily served here as the purpose of this subject easement um, is parking, was for overflow courtesy parking that was never utilized and also not required or used for circulation or access. The easement is no longer necessary because the shared parking was contingent on a commercial use being implemented and that the parking would be used during non-business hours. The easement specifically limits the commercial parking spaces that are striped in their as-built locations in accordance with building permits issued by the city. Parcel three to the north of the site is a commercial site developed with a commercial use with striped surface parking lot. The easement would remain in place there. The project site is undeveloped except for a concrete pad and was recently approved for a residential project. Next slide, please. The petition to partially release a shared parking agreement from parcel four is being petitioned by the new property owner and developer of the residential project and would only release parcel four from the shared parking agreement. The shared parking arrangement would continue on parcel three. Staff would like to clarify that even though the agreement releases the party in the event of a transfer of property, the covenant of easement runs with the land and that's why it is being presented to the commission for a formal release. Next slide. Staff received over 50 emails from neighbors. The main concerns are regarding the impact of the partial release to the community, the required findings for the release of the easement, the timing of the petition, and the claim that mutual agreement is needed to release the easement from the project site. In response, staff reiterates the discussion in the staff report that the previously approved signature project had sufficient parking and that the easement was tied to a commercial use being implemented. Um, Shared parking is available and would continue on parcel three. Per section 20.110.150 of the zoning ordinance, the required finding for the release is that the restriction of the property is no longer necessary to achieve the land use goals of the city. As stated previously, the purpose of the easement was for additional parking and to efficiently utilize the would-be commercial spaces during non-business hours. However, the shared parking has not been implemented at the project site because the project site was not redeveloped. On September 1st, 2023, file number MP22-011 was approved and is an SB35 ministerial permit to allow the construction of a five-story affordable housing um, project. The affordable housing project fulfills the affordable housing goals of the city, specifically facilitating the provision of housing sites across location, type, price that respond to the needs of all economic and demographic segments of the community. Additionally, the city's parking ordinance was updated in December of 2022 to no longer have parking minimums for development proposals and to favor other modes of transportation. Therefore, staff can make the findings that the restriction is no longer necessary to achieve the previously envisioned commercial land use goals of the city. Instead, the release would now facilitate the development of an affordable housing project and minimize parking. Lastly, pursuant to section 20.110.110 of the zoning ordinance, a petition for the release of a covenant of easement may be made by any person. The code doesn't have um, specific timing requirements. Uh, and I also want to speak to the existing masonry wall. The wall is on the western property line. This masonry wall uh, will remain as part of the new residential project. There will be no vehicular connection to the townhome development. Uh, the applicant has confirmed that they have communicated with all involved parties um, and they are available on the line in case of additional questions. Thank you. 
Thank you. Does that conclude the presentation? Uh, actually, I'm going to make staff's recommendation. Apologies. Sure. No, no need to apologize. So, therefore, staff recommends the Planning Commission consider the categorical exemption in accordance with CEQA guidelines section 15305 for minor alterations and land use limitations and adopt a resolution approving the petition to partially release the covenant of easement. That concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. We'll go to public comment from here. I have one speaker card um, from Christopher Lewis. So go ahead and come to the podium. You'll have two minutes to speak. Um, and also, if anyone else wants to speak on this item, just please feel free to line up behind on the stairs. Thank you for your time, members of the Planning Commission. Uh, my name is Christopher Lewis, and I'm here on behalf of the Capital Owners Association, which uh, you, in the uh, staff report, uh, describes as Parcel 2. Um, it is the uh, association's position that uh, the release of the covenant easement with respect to the parking easement on Parcel 4 uh, really violates a consideration of the original agreement between, you know, that was envisioned during uh, the advent of these uh, parcels and the development of these parcels. What is not explained in the staff report is that there was actually a street easement also provided on behalf of the Homeowners Association to um, Parcel 4 and Parcel 3 with respect to allowing uh, vehicular um, uh, use of their streets without any shared maintenance cost of those streets. What is also not included in the staff report is uh, parcel two, which is a storage parcel on the far end of the, uh, the homeowners association that also was able to obtain a street easement on the association property, but was required to pay shared maintenance costs of those streets. It's clear from the language of the joint use and maintenance and parking agreement that it was envisioned that it was going to be a give and take with respect to the parking easement and the use of the association streets. Uh, that is uh, not something that is considered here. So it's something that where the association takes a position that if there's gonna be a release of the parking easement, there should also be a release while there's no petition on the table currently to release that street easement, that that should be released as well in uh, any consideration of releasing this uh, parking easement on parcel four. Um, <clears throat> this is an issue that only affects the association. Obviously, you've seen there's about over 50 comments, and there's probably likely to be more if there's... I believe that concludes, concludes your two minutes. Okay, can I just say one quick thing as well, if you don't mind? I know I'm the only but, one kind of here. Really quick. Really quick. Uh, we just think it's also unnecessary because these are as-built commercial parking spaces. There's no need to actually release the easement because there's no ability to use the easement at this point. Okay. But potentially in the future, if there is not this affordable housing project built, okay. they would be able to utilize that parking, which is desperately needed and will right. be needed, especially with affordable housing being built on the site okay. that doesn't That's have adequate parking. Thank you very way much. Way over time here. So, all right. Uh, I also realize... I made a mistake. I forgot to give five minutes for the applicant to give comment. Um, and you said the applicant is on the line? They are. Is that just a question for the attorney? Is that acceptable given the change in yes, policy? Public. Okay. All right. Um, so let's get the applicant on for their five minute comment. And then we'll take any additional public comment. And then we'll go back to the applicant for another five minutes. If the ad applicants on Zoom, please raise your hand so that we can unmute you. Chair, it doesn't seem like the applicant wants to speak, but we'll give an opportunity at the end if they want to speak Is after that, comments. So. Robert, what? Yeah, they've been, the applicant has been promoted. The name oh. is Hi, this is Teresa Bukowski okay. with Community Development Partners. Can you hear me? Yeah. And Angela, are you on as well? Hi, we with Community Development Partners. Yeah, go ahead, you have five minutes. 
So Teresa, go ahead. <laughs> Hi, my name is Teresa Pakalski. I'm the Senior Development Manager responsible or managing uh, 525 North Capitol Avenue. Um, this project is providing a 160 units of affordable housing, um, including units for uh, permanent supportive housing, um, BASH veterans, and general affordable. Oh, I apologize, the screen changed. Just wanted to make sure this was still working. Yeah, we can still hear you. Uh, so as stated, um, this this easement is only valid if there are um, if there is commercial purpose on this site. We are building affordable housing, which is 100% um, or 100 residential and affordable housing. Um, and therefore, there will be no commercial parking on the site. So we're really just trying to clean up the title report and have um, this reflect the use of the site. For, for future use. Angela, if you'd like to chime in. Sure, so um, just to elaborate on what Teresa mentioned, um, what Community Development Partners has been around since 2011. Um, I do wanna note that our focus is to provide housing for families, yeah. veterans, um, permanent supportive housing, uh, people with disabilities, so this, this site will also um, have a kitchen on site to help feed the residents and the community at large. Um, we are actually over parked on the site to make sure we have more than enough parking for our residents, for all of our service providers. Um, and, and our goal is to be good neighbors. So if there's any joint maintenance or use agreements that are necessary, we're more than happy to do that. But as Teresa mentioned, um, the purpose of this uh, partial release of the covenant of easement that only affects our site specifically is just to help clean up the title report and make sure everything is in line with the current use. And to piggyback on Angela's comments with being good neighbors, we have had numerous um, community meetings and community engagement to give our neighbors um, opportunities to speak. Our original plan did have an entrance on Beach Duck Court, the um, private and shared road that um, the HOA's attorney had mentioned. They had requested that we do not use that road. And so we had actually removed that entrance and only have one entrance now on 525. So um, we have complied with not using, um, you know, their space to the best of our, of our abilities that we could um, and have removed that entrance, so. Are there any questions for us? We can get there, but um, you still have two and a half minutes. Do you have anything else you want to add? I think that's all. Okay. I think that's it for now. All right. Thanks. Um, so we'll end that time. We'll take any additional public comment in the chambers if there is any, and then another five minutes. Um, okay. Do we have anyone else here in the chambers tonight that would like to give public comment on this item? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just once per person, unfortunately. Um, okay, uh, and I guess since we don't have any other further public comment, as the applicant, you do have another five minutes, but I imagine you don't have anything else to add, so. That's correct, thank you. Okay, cool, we'll take it back to the commission. Um, okay, so let's see. Give me just a second here. Okay, I see Commissioner Cantrell has a hand up. Go ahead. So I'm just curious if if the um, the new owners plan to, to make this development. One, I'm curious, what is the percentage of income for um, the MI for this property? What what are we talking about? It's between 30 and 60 percent AMI. There will be 71 units at 30 percent. 25 units at 50% and 62 units at 60% AMI along with two manager's units. Okay, good, and it thank was, you. And it was approved under a ministerial permit, SB 35. Yeah. Um, but again, it, the project was approved. This is about the, the easement. Okay, no, I know, I understand that, but I still wanted the information. Um, at any rate, uh, also, if, if the new owners are willing to be good neighbors, why is why can't they just create an agreement with the homeowners to spell out those specifics? 
that's something we can do at a later date. Um, at this point, we're actually a little early in the project. We're not looking to break ground and begin building out the site until January 2025. And we have had two in-person meetings with the HOA, um, their, their attorney, our attorney, our teams, to go through the design, to make sure they're comfortable with our design, and to make sure we continue to be good neighbors. Okay, so why are we doing this now? This is a condition of approval for their permit. There were other easements identified, as uh, the gentleman pointed out, that also need to get cleared, um, and those are also conditions of approval. Those will need to be handled privately as the, part of the city is not a party to those eas easements. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, myself and then Commissioner Young. Uh, so just, I did, didn't really get, a, I think, a great picture of the history of how this easement came to be in the first place from the staff report. Could you just elaborate on like, and I know it wasn't the same parties at the time, but like, can you just elaborate on like how this easement came to be and why? Sure, this was part of a larger uh, mixed use signature project and the surrounding neighborhood had been using the vacant lot uh, for parking. Um, so it was understood that parking should be maximized um, in the future commercial spaces. However, the orchard project was sufficiently parked, so it's not a deficiency for in terms of the townhome project itself. Um, there is a goal in the general plan. It's an attractive city goal that promotes the shared um, use of parking uh, in private spaces. So that was encouraged and promoted and um, ultimately made a condition of approval of the tentative map so that in the event of um, maybe visitors, the commercial surface parking could be used for that purpose. Um. Thanks, um, and, and just to clarify on something, so the lot, or the the property was vacant and neighbors were using it to park, uh, and when the property owner went to get approval for that signature project you mentioned, they entered into this easement. Um, I, I'm, I'm only like, surface level familiar with easements. Why did the property owner choose to do that? Was there any, like did they get anything out of, like what was their, the reason that this agreement came to be in the first place? Just to provide some clarification, there was never parking on this site. It has always been vacant with no, um, there's never been parking. Right, on parcel four, right? And actually I'm gonna turn it over to the division manager, John Tu. He's actually the original project manager for the okay. Orchard Project. Great. So. I guess there's some advantages of having some longevity here. So it was the original signature project that had a mixed use. And in general, when there's generally a commercial use and a residential use, if there is proposed parking surface or in a lot, we generally want to allow it to maximize the use both during the day and the evening. So it's actually, they are not the original developers and owners of the property, the ones that have the affordable project, that was actually a different developer. Right. So as the project's now changed over not to be a commercial use, it doesn't seem that that share agreement and that easement would, would actually necessarily work operationally. So therefore, they're coming forward to remove that uh, easement because it's no longer to move forward as a commercial development. Right, no, and just to be clear, I, I understand why we're talking about removing the easement right now. I'm just, what I'm trying to understand is why was the easement created in the first place? Like what was, because this was something that was entered into mutually between the nearby residential properties and. So owner. in general, you don't know who's gonna be, when you have one owner of an entire site, and you, you generally want some certainty that if a project moves forward, some agreements will continue with it. So therefore you tentatively put that in easements or tentative agreement. So if, let's say, this developer left and another commercial came in, they would still be beholden to that if they are going to develop a commercial project. But since in this case they're not doing a commercial project, that easement really isn't as conducive. Sure, but my question is why was, the, why was that agreement made in the first place? Because, if it, well, if there were some concerns from the general neighbors around here that, hey, we're concerned that there may be some spillover if people go into our neighborhood. Is there anything you can okay, do? Okay, so it was basically a concession that yes, the, that, was if made going, that, that if we can provide additional parking if there's a commercial, 
we're going to do that as part of an easement. Of course, that's only if it's a viable option, right? In this specific case, it won't be viable if the project's no longer operationally mixed, shared that way. I see, okay, thank you. That, that was what I was trying to understand. So it was when the signature project that was mixed use was originally proposed, that was an ag agreement that was made like as a concession. Okay, um, so just following up on that, so just in general with this type of easement, it's at the city's discretion, like whether it's granted or whether it continues to exist. I just, again, I'm not really familiar with the legal mechanisms here, so I'm just, is that normally how it goes? Yes, the planning commission is the decision maker. Okay, and gotcha. And so basically staff is saying that this easement was created in because of the commercial element of this previous mixed use project and its staff's position that it, the easement's no longer relevant because it's now a purely residential project. Okay, thank you. I, I really appreciate that. I was just trying to get that background and um, the whole situation around it. Uh, I have Commissioner Young and then Commissioner Bickford. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for those questions also. That, uh, that was also confusion in my mind. Um, question for staff, the, the affordable housing project, is it in process of being approved? Has it already been entitled or? Yes, it was approved on September 1st, 2023 under SB 35. Okay. Um, what would the consequence be for that project if we were not approved this item? Since, um, since the release of the covenant is a condition of the permit, then um, they would not be able to satisfy the permit conditions and would not be able to pull building permits to start construction. Okay, so just so I thank you that just so I'm clear they would not be able to get a building permit for their affordable housing project if this were not released, correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. And actually, if I could just ask a follow-up question, sorry to jump ahead here. Um, given that the affordable housing project was approved under SB 35, that you know it's a ministerial approval process mandated by state law, what would be the consequences for the city if we didn't approve this, e this change of the easement and they weren't, the developer wasn't able to pull building permits? Yeah. I don't know that I can answer that question. I don't know if our attorney wants to chime in. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's really nothing we could do, right? If, if they're not going to be able to satisfy the conditions, we can't move forward with the project. So right, would we be penalized? Is that the, yeah, basically, is that violating SB 35? is what I'm asking, if we were to not approve this change to the easement. Um, I'm, well, I think we back up a little bit because um, I'm happy to look into that further, but really what we're talking about is the easement being a property interest, right, that this HOA or this these residents now hold. And this is more than just um, something that we you know, can just void, right? You need to hear the parties. This is a public hearing where all sides get to present their evidence and their testimony to decide whether or not that interest is of use or still needed. So that's what you're voting on tonight is whether or not they can, if this is no longer an interest that is needed or is something that they can demonstrate they need for their residents, then you can vote however you wish to vote, but it's um, that's what we're here to discuss. Um, and as far as the SB 35 project, that's not really what this is about. Fair enough. Um, Commissioner Bickford and then Commissioner Cantrell. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure whether this is for staff or for the, the, the gentleman from the Homeowners Association, but the Homeowners Association clearly wrote in and said they have a concern. But my understanding is that this parcel, there's a wall between it and they've never parked there. So do, do I misunderstand that? I'd like some clarification. I think it's, yeah, That's it's in correct. order to ask a question of the speaker. So yeah, if you wanna come back to the podium and answer the question.
Uh, thank you for Commissioner Bickford uh, for bringing up this issue. There is a wall, but it is not uh, entirely running the entire length of the border between the two properties. And there is a crew driveway currently in place there because it was anticipated at one time that there would be access to from the HOA property to uh, what is currently, I think, parcel four, you guys are saying. So there is currently a driveway there. And at this time, that it is anticipated by CDP to be using the HOA streets to pick up and uh, drop off trash and do trash collection from the HOA property. And that is the concern here. If the finding is, is that there's a wall there that's you know, full and uh, completely uh, separates the properties, the association is more than willing to go ahead and remove the driveway and, you know, complete the wall in order to separate the properties. The issue here is for the HOA is that they, they considered having this parking easement for the use of their streets. Now they're, we're talking about releasing this parking easement, but we're going to have no type of contribution to shared maintenance or at least formally agreed upon. I do say CDP is working with us on that issue, but that has not been finalized yet. So the association is going to have increased street maintenance, trash collection, big trucks going through, picking up, dropping off trash, you know, potentially making messes on the association property where they have to deal with all of that without any contribution from uh, parcel four in the affordable housing project. And that is generally the concern. So the wall is not complete because at this time, unless things have changed since I've last spoken with CDP, that uh, the trash collection will no longer be from the association property. Um, but there is a wall that is partial but not complete. There is no full separation at this time. So, so for clarification, I, what I was really trying to get at was, are people actually parking on this lot four today? Well, at this or time... Or is the issue only the, the easement and access for future trash collection? Well, at this time, there's a fence around it. I, I'm not sure. I would have to speak with some, uh, some of the board members and residents there at the HOA whether or not there was parking. I believe there was when it was still open, even though it was kind of like, you know, one concrete pad and essentially dirt. Uh, but I believe they use that as well as the neighboring par retail parcel uh, to park when they need it. And they need it because there is, you know, parking is an impacted area there and it's going to be even more impacted. So. Thank you. I was just trying to get at exactly what the homeowner's concerns were, uh, whether it was specifically a parking constraint or a, an access and easement for uh, yeah, in general, the issue is, yeah, they would like the parking, but they do understand the condition proceeding in, in the uh, joint use and ma uh, maintenance and parking agreement that it's as-built commercial. If this is not as-built commercial, there is really no parking there that could be used, but at a future date, that may be available. So we don't know whether or not this project is actually going to be built until it's built. So, you know, at this point, that's why they kind of figure it's premature to proceed with releasing this agreement that's thank you for answering my questions no problem I'm here for any other questions thank you and and thank you for asking that question i think that helped me to get a better sense of what the hoa's position is um okay so we have commissioner cantrell then rosario then tordios i didn't move you down did i tordios okay good okay. go ahead actually it, it seems like this might be a little premature i'm not sure um we, we know there won't be any shovels in the ground on this project for at least a year. Is that correct? That's what I heard the applicant state. Yeah, that's what I thought I heard. Um, and getting this, this um, permitting done, is that required at this time? Is there something that um, makes this permitting need to happen now in order to continue forward? It, yes, it is a condition of approval. Most um, permit conditions are prior to the issuance of a building permit or grading permit. Right, but the, is the permit required at this moment? Could it, could it be done a little later, given the party's time to negotiate something they can agree upon? I would assume that generally when you're getting financing for a project, which typically affordable housings have to get, it complicates things where there's an easement on the site. I think that's why they're trying to get that now and why we made it a condition of their project for them to proceed. That's holding them up from getting shovel on the ground and they can't get a building permit because it's a condition that they haven't met. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. This is if we can ask the applicant, they might be able to shed light on their timeline. And permits do expire. 
Right. So I, we still have Angela Hayward and Teresa on the line. And so I'd just like to step back for a minute with regards to the HOA's concern. We hired a trash consultant. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, just, I want to their, just interrupt their, you real quick. Um, the, this is just to answer the question that was asked. Um, okay. Well, with regard to permitting, um, yes, we, we have a project timeline. Um, we do have funding we're securing from, we've secured from the county, we're securing funding from the city. And as it was mentioned, yes, we have to, um, we have to basically go through the process to make sure that we meet all of the requirements to pull permits um, before we even get close to that point. I mean, for example, our designs um, are going to start going into the planning department here in about a month, right? It's a long process and, and there's, there's several items um, we have to work through. This is just one of them. Okay. Um, so let's just, for the sake of argument, saying there's about a month. Can you negotiate with these homeowners to resolve this? It seems like there's an answer here. It doesn't seem to be that complicated. Agree to help take care of the streets. Right. I don't know, but it seems like there's an agreement here. Well, we, as I mentioned, we have been meeting with the HOA and we will continue to do so. Um, and we hired a trash consultant. We found a fix for their issues. We are happy to go into a joint maintenance agreement. I don't know that we'll have resolution with the HOA in the next month. Um, I mean, quite honestly, they are not in favor of our project, obviously. We've been doing everything we can to be good neighbors and work with them, and we'll continue to do that. Okay. And to clarify, um, we have met with Public Works to discuss moving trash to 525 North Cap, or sorry, to North Capitol Avenue instead of Beechnut, and they are currently reviewing that and will provide us with an answer when they've come to a conclusion. Okay, thank you, I, I, I appreciate it, thank you. Commissioner Tordias? Or sorry, no, I, that's Rosario and then Tordias, my bad. Yeah, just a quick question for staff. Um, you said that it's a requirement of the permit that this is released. Um, can the requirements of the permit be changed? It's an SB 35 permit, I'm gonna to defer to. I think we do have the ability to modify permit conditions, but um, I believe you have to have your land clear for you to move forward with the project, and that's why we make these kinds of things conditions, because if we don't, then they'll end up stuck a little bit up the way. Um, I, I'll defer to um, Robert or John if they're more familiar with these types of conditions. Yeah, like as I previously stated, when there are easements on top of properties, it can lead to disputes down the line. Generally, they want a cleaner title, especially an affordable project that which may have multiple funding sources. So that's typically why we want to. So for example, if you have property lines over each other or other things, we typically want those resolved prior to you going to the building permit. Because once you get to that stage, it becomes a much bigger issue. Makes sense. And let me just clarify, if, if there is a concern of it being too early or premature, I, um, you could release today conditionally and say, you know, this becomes effective once they pull build building permits, right? Or this becomes effective upon such and such date, just in case this doesn't get built, right? So that's something that's available. And then is there a wall there or is there not a wall? Like I, I got a bunch of letters saying, I got the staff report saying there's a wall, a bunch of yeah. letters saying there's not a wall. Yeah, staff, staff completed a site visit today. There is a wall. There is a wall. Yes. Do you have any photographs? Sorry. A whole wall? <laughs> Part of a wall? The gentleman just said there was not a wall or a hole in the wall. So I'm looking at an aerial. I'm happy to send photos of the wall if helpful. I would like so to. the wall doesn't extend to the very edge of the property line, but it covers most of the the property, the western? Yeah, it's yeah. on the western property line, um, six to eight feet tall. It's a solid masonry wall. So there's, there's most of a wall? Yeah. Okay. There is a wall, yes. Okay, okay. that's all. 
I, I just want to say, I know there's some jokes and laughs on the dais, but just remember this is a serious issue that people care about, so I don't want to be a wet blanket, but I also just want to point that out. Uh, Commissioner Tordios. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to say that from my perspective, I don't think that you know this process is premature. We've noted that it's a condition of the permit. Affordable housing projects already have so many loops, hoops that they have to jump through. You know, when we did our uh, study of the most recent residential cost of development report last fall, I think there was a graph saying that residential uh, affordable housing projects tend to have six to seven financing sources. That's a lot of, you know, hoops to jump through in addition to going through the building permit process. And all of that's gonna be contingent upon having this clean title. So I think clearing up these easements makes sense for this project at this phase, even if shovels aren't in the ground for you know, some time into the future. Uh, I also just wanted to uh, you know, remind uh, the commissioners that we uh, just went through the housing element process. According to HCD, we're supposed to build over 20,000 units of affordable housing over the next seven years. I think this is a project that has been sitting vacant for six, seven years, and we have a developer who wants to build 160 units of affordable housing, including some supportive housing units. That's something that's difficult for me personally to say no to, and I think I'll be supporting this project. I have Young, then Barosio, then Cantrell. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, just to um, echo Commissioner Tordillo's comments, um, so we had an easement that was for a commercial building that was not built, and now we have an affordable housing project, as Commissioner Tordillo said, that we badly need in the city and already has to go through many hoops and hollers to get approved. So I'm not inclined to, um, to be opposed to release. I'm gonna actually make a motion to approve the staff recommendation on this item. Second. We have a motion from Commissioner Young to approve the staff recommendation and then a second from Commissioner and Cordios. It, just if, if I might, um, just wanted to remind the commissioners that we are voting on a petition to release an easement. This is not the project. This has nothing to do with SB 35. I don't want that to cloud your judgment. I just want to make sure that you all understand that. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a property interest held by one parcel over another parcel. So that's what we're doing here. Um, but just keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you. And then acknowledging the motion on the second, we'll continue discussion and then vote on it. Commissioner Barosio and then Commissioner Cantrell. Hello. Hello, good evening. Um, so quick question. Does, does the HOA lose any leverage with the passing of this resolution? It sounds like there is this underlining fear that if we push through that the conversations in good faith that are being mentioned may now be more one-sided. Is that, is that accurate? Um, Mayor Blanco, Planning Division. As stated previously, there are other easements that need to get settled privately. Those still need to happen. Those are still permit conditions. Um, they just won't happen at, at the Planning Commission. Um, and uh, also would like to add that this is a partial, a petition for a partial release. Shared parking will still occur on parcel three, which is the neighboring parcel with a fully developed surface parking lot. Right, it's sort of like, um, you know, we need a political analysis of this. I understand the technical analysis, but I just don't know what may happen in um, in conversations. And just um, a quick explanation of the storage um, unit. It seems to the HOA that there's something tied to an agreement made with the easement on parcel four, but something was attached to it in parcel one or storage units on the side. Can you or can someone say a little bit more about that? I'm not as familiar. I'm going to turn it over to John Two Division Manager. So when this project was envisioned, it was envisioned with the storage in the back and commercial in the front and residential kind of in the middle. So as they were looking at the operation, when it includes the trash enclosure, site access, fire, police, and all those different things, they recorded all these different easements. So the, the easements that they reference for access is particularly for the storage. If it gets built, 
that they would need to use some of those streets for access to that specific mini storage in the back. But right. that project is currently entitled but not yet built. Right, right. and yes, um, again, the facts are true. Um, however, was there, you know, I don't know how to say this, like in good faith, I don't know if the master plan had this built in, but was there any agreement that this storage unit won't be for residents or this storage unit won't be a park, but it'll be commercial. Um, but in compromising that, we're gonna have this easement for the residents and parking. Um, was that ever an understanding? And maybe, um, and I forget your name, but uh, the representative from HOA, if you can chime in, in the history of that, was there some sort of agreement that was made that now with the understanding that yes we need more housing we need to push this through in good faith but are we overlooking that once upon a time agreement and maybe right now is the time because the way I see it is if we vote yes on this then that may not um, it may put the HOA's concerns a little bit I don't know, like it'll sort of squash what they're trying to do is the sense that I'm getting. So the shared parking easement only encumbered or affected parcels three and four. It has nothing to do with parcel one. I believe those are access easements, and again, those are separate from the shared parking easement. In, in designing this whole block of one, two, three, four, you're saying that there was... Um, they came in phases, or was this whole project back when it was designed for homes, commercial, all the four parcels, was it designed at the same time where these agreements were made at that time, or did these agreements evolve after certain parcels were being discussed, permitted, and developed? Yeah, it was a phased project, and the public use easements were a condition of approval of the tentative map for the Orchard project. Okay. They weren't discussed over the phase. It was all at one time prior to anything being developed, prior to the existence of the HOA. It was just assumed that for this site to operate and, and kind of go forward in a certain kind of way, these were kind of the easements that the developer at the time, through the tentative map, decided to put on the entire parcel. So um, it happens now that they're moving forward and it's no longer going to be developed that specific way. So there's now a petition to release that easement. Uh, we are looking at this from a planning standpoint of what is the overall goal of the cities and the required findings of releasing the petition. We can't as much get involved in the personal agreement or private agreement among the HOA and the developer now. It's, it's not as much in our purview. It's more about does the release of this petition help the city reach its overall goals and general plan consistency. Right, and I think that's where at least I see myself as the commissioner having a way in on those kind of things, right? Like the things that aren't in the purview of the city, but in the purview of quality of life and, you know, good neighborhood relationships. Um, so is it, is it too late to have the, um, the developer and the HOA come up with an agreement and then a month or two down the road this resolution can be put before us let me let me just uh, chime in again and, and reiterate kind of what i mentioned before which is releasing it now conditionally on the pulling of a building permit which allows time for the hoa and the developer to negotiate some sort of you know agreement between the between the parties but I'm just throwing it out there because it sounds like you're kind of struggling with this a bit. So I wanted to make sure that that was understood, that you can release it now, conditioned on pulling a building permit later, at a later date, that the parties will enter into some sort of joint maintenance agreement or something along those lines. But that doesn't guarantee outcome. That just puts it in writing that meetings will be held. Um, certainly does. But I mean, I would imagine that if they are interested in moving forward with this project and, and reaching a consensus with their neighbors, that they would be encouraged to, to do this and that 
you know, I mean, they're going to have to release other easements along with that. I mean, those are also conditions of getting a building permit. So that is also standing away. But I, I just want to put it out there that that is an option. So for clarity, so you're saying if we put this condition in that both parties or invested interest stakeholders, what have you, would have to agree to something, come up with some compromise, and then the next phase. Well, not necessarily that they would need to come up with something or agree to some compromise. It's just, it gives them more time. Could we have the more time? Well, and, and I'll just say like, the reason why this is happening now, which has been kind of discussed on the dais here, is that um, these projects takes a long time to with funding, with, with pulling right. building permits, all of that is a long process, and this is part of that process, and this is one of the initial stages of that process to clean the title. Right. I just, I just thank you for the clarity. I just, I just fear that um, in, you know, I mean, the cup half empty perspective is that we do this, um, but it it doesn't it doesn't get finalized so for me part of the process is to tie up loose ends um you know clean up the mix up and the misunderstandings first and then with that urgency of wanting to pull permits of wanting to get financing that will make sure that these conversations happen asap but if we do this with an unspecified timeline um, or a timeline or a condition that conversations will be had, but nothing really more formal than that, then I'd rather just say no to, to this and have the parties hurry up because of the financing and all that. So in other words, like let's keep the urgency there um, and have this all settled and then we hear the resolution because I think that will make all parties come to the table quicker as opposed to a condition. Um, and that's just the way I see it. But I thank everyone for their thoughts and clarity. I have Commissioner Cantrell and then Commissioner Tordios. Actually, I, I, I understand what you're saying, actually, and that's kind of been my thinking, but I during the course of this, I remember hearing something that um, might be a problem. So the statement was that they disagree, that the community disagrees with having this facility in their neighborhood. Um, and if that is the case, this gives them unfair leverage as well. So there's this kind of duplicity of this problem. Um, so. Is, in fact, that a problem? Any statements from the community that makes that a relevant statement to us, that they are trying to block this development? I think that's a fair statement. But and by what evidence? Just give me some example, please. Well, under the SB 35 permit, there isn't a public outreach, no required community meeting, no public hearing. Um, but staff has received communications from neighboring residents and the HOA attorney um, kind of raising adjacent issues to the um, affordable housing project. Can you describe those adjacent issues? Again, it goes back to the easements, um, so access easements, parking easements, and the applicant has met with, with the HOA attorney and community, they can probably speak to other issues that have been raised. So that's, that's the, the discussion of the missing wall. <laughs> that, that missing part of the wall gives access to their community. That's my assumption. Yes, and just to clarify, the, the project would have um, its wall extend, actually, to the property line. Okay. So, I don't know if that's relevant, but. Okay, I, I get it. I respect all the opinions in the room here, um, but I'm, I'm gonna be inclined to say yes, because I, I think 
I think I see something happening here that happens a lot. Um, and I, I think if there is an interest to negotiate and resolve this, it will happen. Uh, if there is no interest, it, it will block. Um, though I do think that this is premature, I still believe that. I think there's time. Um, but I, I, I don't think we can afford to allow this type of activity to block development as well. So, thank you. Uh, I have Tordillos, Ornelas Wise, and then Oliverio. Thank you. And I appreciate Commissioner Cantrell's comments there on you know, some of the neighborhood opposition here and how that factors into these ongoing negotiations. I think you asked if there's any evidence of you know, this neighborhood opposition. And I actually found as I was preparing for today's hearing, looking at you know, street view images of the site, uh, a petition on change.org with over 1,200 signatures titled Protect Homes and Schools from Homeless Housing that is specifically about this project. So I do think that an element here that has been largely unspoken is that there are people who aren't negotiating in good faith and do just want to prevent this project from being built, which is something we see, unfortunately, pretty frequently when it comes to affordable housing generally and homeless supportive housing specifically. Uh, so I think that that is something that we need to acknowledge. Thank you. Vice Chair Onelis Wise. Hello. Um, I just <laughs> wanted to make sure my mic was working here. <laughs> um, what we have before us is a petition for partial release of a covenant of easement for shared parking on the subject site, right? And it, it looks like it's currently fenced off and they're not even using it for parking. So for me, it's really easy to say yes. We could step right outside, we could look outside the windows here and we could see people sleeping on, on, on the floor. Um, so I'm a mom with small children. I love parking, close, really close. Um, however, um, you know, because they're building housing here, which is much needed in San Jose and in the Bay Area, but affordable housing at that AMI, uh, I mean, it, to me, it's like just, the right thing to do and easy because it doesn't sound like they're even using it for parking right now. So it's real simple. So I will definitely be supporting the project. And Commissioner Alverio, I saw you had your hand up. That's right, thank you, Chair. Uh, ge the gentleman that was the one member of the public that came, could you come down the microphone, please? And I apologize, are you on the board or are you representative? No, I'm a legal counsel for the, uh, the association. The board is contracted with you to represent them? Yes. Correct, got it. So, um, so overall the understanding is, is that the when this project was approved in its entirety as a signature project, that there were certain rules in place to make everything work out well. With the SB 35 application, which denied the public from any public hearing or any ability to comment, we now have this level of detail uh, that we have to rectify. Um, are you, so let's, a couple questions. Do you genuinely believe the residents of the HOA are using the, this as an opportunity to try to forestall a project? Or do you believe it's really just about money? Meaning the money the HOA has to pay to maintain property? 100% uh, no, and I, I understand uh, Commissioner Dortia's, uh, you know, changeposition.org, whatever it is. And yeah, there was some opposition at first when the residents didn't know, and I'm sure some of that uh, opposition to the project as a whole still exists among some of the residents. But myself, along with uh, representative of CDP and the board of directors and some of the members of the association had a chance to hear out what the project actually was. This isn't something where the association doesn't want it to be built at all. You know, I'm sure everybody doesn't want a whole lot of you know, congestion, this is a big project, but it is what it is, and it's a, it, it's a good goal to have affordable housing. I live in the Bay Area, it's expensive, we get that. The board gets that of the association. Many of the residents get that at this point. The concern, and the only concern at this point right now, is that they feel that they had a property right that is being taken away, and they're going to be forced at this time to be able to have to share their streets 
and incur the cost to maintain those streets without any compensation. And uh, Commissioner uh, Barosio and I apologize if I get your name incorrect or pronounce your name incorrect. I just want to say this is just to answer the question Commissioner Oliverio asked. But I, to, I think this goes to the entire thing. Here. No, I, I know, but it's not an opportunity being, to pontificate forward on the issues at hand here. I, I think if there's something you want to share without referencing a commissioner, I think that's better. Right. But it's, yeah. this, is, we're, this isn't a public comment. This is just an answer to your question. Fair enough. Yeah. I thought I was answering his question. Well, I, I think it was, too. I, was, well, yeah. I didn't know what the last name was. Look, I need speaking everybody to stop for a second here. No, can you please turn the microphone it. off, John? Look, uh, look I'm, I'm trying to run an orderly meeting here. You specifically referenced you wanted to speak on something that another commissioner said. This was just the time to answer the question from Commissioner Oliverio. And Commissioner Oliverio, if you have further questions I for do. him, yeah, go right ahead. But I just I want to make it clear this is not a time for further public comment. I think you want to turn his microphone back yeah. on. Okay, great. And then do you feel that CDP has been a, um, a good partner in this negotiation? I mean, what's your view and assessment of them in this process? Uh, they've definitely, you know, we have been working together fairly well. Not recently as there's the communications and the response time has slowed. Uh, so there's a concern obviously on the HOA side that the discussions are going to stop at this point, particularly if this is uh, released, because then it gives them no incentive uh, anymore to be able to proceed with our discussion. We, we'd like to resolve this thing when it comes to the streets. And the, you know, the parking is probably gone if this thing gets built. Right. They understand that. And we then just want to make sure that every, their interests are represented here. And by losing this, they lose the ability to have any type of leverage in those discussions. Do you believe the private easements still allow you to have a conversation with CDP, or do you believe you'll be ignored if this action happens? Well, it, it depends on uh, what happens. They are working, from what I understand, CDP is working on you know, with the trash consultant to move their trash location. I believe if that is addressed, then there's probably going to be no issues between the HOA and, that, and CDP building this project. That is the primary issue that we're dealing with at all at this point. We're not okay. dealing with stopping the project. They're not dealing with getting parking. This is it. Great. And with uh, releasing this, uh, loses, the as uh, association loses any ability to have leverage in those discussions to be able in, to ensure that CDP acts on the things that they said they were going to do. Okay, thank you. I'll have you pause for a second there. And then is the applicant still here? We're here. Yes. So um, applicant, you know, as you can see, the conversation from the Planning Commission wanting to make sure that people are taken care of. I mean, is it, do you fully intend on concluding or bargaining in good faith to resolve this item? And I mean, do you, how long are these, do you foresee these conversations or obstacles to the conversation taking? We're trying to expeditiously wrap this up, um, and as as he mentioned, yes, we hired a trash consultant. We believe we have a fix. It's been submitted. It'll be submitted as part of our plans. We will not have the trash pickup in the area where the HOA has expressly made it clear they do not want us to pick up. We are happy to enter into joint maintenance and joint use agreements. We we respond quickly and actively whenever they reach out to us. And we met with them for over two hours um, last summer. I think it was July. We sat with the HOA in person and we'll continue to do so. Thank and you, to appreciate also clarify, that. CDP is not just the developer of this community. We are also the long-term owner. We do not sell our properties. Um, so we will be the neighbors um, of the HOA for at least, you know, the compliance period of 15, 55 years for this project. So our intention and goal is to be a good neighbor, not just through the completion of releasing this easement, but for the entirety of the project. Um, we also have our attorney in the, uh, in the room and we would like her to speak. She asked if, um, we could give Thank you. Ability. And I just I want to clarify, you mentioned hard. two hours you met with them in July of 2023. Yeah, that is correct. Okay, and then for the last six months, have you had discussions? We have. We get emails monthly <laughs> and okay. respond to them from the HOA. Okay, uh, I, I just wanted to understand if you know if both parties are going to work in good faith to resolve something here, because I understand the action of removing the easement does put the HOA in a different position. Um, um, it actually doesn't put the HOA in a different position. I'm good. Uh, Thank you. Okay, well, I'm good. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. All right, and, and uh, then and then since the attorney's here, I, I guess we should hear from that person. 
Well, if the we have a applicant's attorney. Yeah, no, I say if we have a question for the yeah. developer's attorney, we can totally do that, or the applicant's attorney. But I know you're being paid by the hour, so get on so, down here. <laughs> okay, do you do you have a question? For I do her? have a question. Okay. You have to come in the microphone. <laughs> yeah, just um, and and just for the applicant's future efforts, the, the five minutes we gave earlier and the additional five minutes would have been a time if you wanted to have your attorney give additional comment, but we can totally ask her questions. Good evening. Thank you. And could you state your name so we know? Sure. My name's Linda Klein. I'm a land use attorney with Cox Castle Nicholson, and I represent the applicant. Great. Thanks, Linda. Um, so from your perspective, do you see this as uh, something that is just a matter of time and can be resolved, or do you see them as irreconcilable differences between the two parties? So I would say that when we met, it felt a little chilly. Um, that's just my perception. Um, I will say I have not been copied on correspondence, although they join knows that um, CDP is represented. So that's a little concerning to me as an attorney. Um, but I do think CDP is just really good at what it does. They want to be good neighbors. They are long-term owners. They, it doesn't work for anybody. Okay. Like you all have neighbors. It doesn't work if you you and your neighbors don't get along. Sure. And there are other things Sorry. that these parties need to agree to. And, and from what you understand, this real garbage pickup thing, it sounds like we're there. CDP agrees, HOA doesn't want it there. They're in agreement, they just have to. Correct. And, and staff has to approve that, is that correct? Is a condition of permit? Public Works has to approve that. Public Works, okay. And, does, and, and there's no one from Public Works here, right? There is. Hi, uh, and do you think that's gonna be a no-brainer as far as approving that? This is a senior engineer on the line, Michelle Kimball. Good evening, Chair um, and Planning Commissioners. Um, in terms of public works, yes, we are evaluating the, um, the trash pickup um, along Capitol Avenue. Um, I don't foresee that as a major issue in terms of, of access um, for the site, um, in terms of the, of the access, ingress, egress issues that they're having um, on uh, the, the, the private uh, private street. Great, thank you. I've that's answered all my questions. I'm happy that people are talking, understanding the conversation. Ideally, we'd like these things resolved before we get here, but it's not always a perfect process. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I don't see any other hands up. Do we have any further comment or questions from the commission? And if not, we'll go to a vote on Commissioner Young's motion. Okay, just to remind everyone, um, we have a motion from Commissioner Young with a second from Tordios to approve the staff recommendation. And the staff recommendation is, staff recommends the Planning Commission take all the following actions. Consider a categorical exemption, excuse me, consider a categorical exemption in accordance with CEQA guidelines section 15305 for minor alterations and land use limitations and adopt a resolution approving the petition to partially release a covenant of easement for shared parking. We'll go to a roll call vote on this. Vice Chair Ellis Wise? Yes. Commissioner Brosio? No. Commissioner Bickford? Yes. Commissioner Cantrell? Yes. Commissioner Casey? Yes. Commissioner Garcia? No. Commissioner Oliverio? Yes. Commissioner Rosario? Yes. Commissioner Tordillos? Yes. Commissioner Young? Yes. And myself, yes. That, I believe, is nine yes, two no, and zero abstentions. Is that correct? Yeah, so the motion passes. All right. We will move on to item 5B, which is H17-004 and ER20-262, which is a site development permit to allow the demolition of an existing single-family residence and multifamily apartment building and the construction of a 210-unit multifamily residential building. Do we have a staff presentation for this item? Hi, Alec. Uh, Evening Commissioners, Al Catienza, Planning Project Manager on the Development Review Team. I've got a presentation I'm gonna share on Zoom. Give me two seconds. Yeah.
And I've got uh, Rima Mahmood with me. She's from the environmental review team. So she'll be discussing the environmental impact report that was prepared for this project. So before you is uh, the 439 South 4th Street project. It was previously referred to as the Metro Station project. It's file number H17-004 and ER20-262. Uh, so just for context, this site is located at 439, 451 South 4th Street. It's just south of here, um, between San Salvador and William Street, on the west side of South 4th Street. Uh, it's currently two parcels right now um, in this project. If approved, uh, we would process a lot line adjustment to merge those two parcels. Um, it's developed with an existing 30 unit multifamily apartment building as well as a single family house that was actually previously used as a, a photo store. So the site has a general plan land use designation of downtown and is zoned downtown primary commercial, and we just call it DC. Um, so just as a reminder for DC downtown primary commercial, uh, in downtown we don't have any uh, maximum height limits. Those are set by the FAA. Uh, and there are also no minimum setbacks for the downtown uh, primary commercial zoning district. Uh, when it comes to land use for Residential projects in downtown, the maximum uh, residential density is approximately 800 dwelling units to the acre. Uh, this project comes in at about 400 dwelling units to the acre, so about half the maximum allowed density. So with regards to the project itself, as I stated, this, this uh, site is currently developed with an existing single family house and a 30 unit uh, apartment building. Um, and both of those would be demolished uh, the apartment building specifically is subject to the city's Ellis Act ordinance. Um, with that, it would also include the removal of 10 trees. Three of those are ordinance size, 10, or excuse me, seven are non-ordinance size, and uh, 11 trees would be replaced on site. The project itself is uh, the construction of a 25-story, 274-foot high, 210-unit multifamily residential building. Uh, one quick note, so this project was submitted prior to April 10th of this past year. So it's actually subject to the old parking requirements. Um, so you see that term parking reduction, that's kind of odd to see now, but the way we processed this was allowing a 20% parking reduction as well as an alternative parking arrangement. So it includes a mix of just standard parking spaces as well as uh, puzzle lifts or mechanical lifts as they're commonly referred to. Um, so just in terms of project review, uh, this project was you know, reviewed for conformance with the general plan as well as the municipal code. Um, and again, this project included you know, tree removals, so Title 13, Ellis Act, which is governed by total, Title 17 of the municipal code, as well as the zoning code, Title 20. Um, another sort of funky thing about this project is since it was submitted in 2017, it's actually subject to the old downtown design guidelines. Um, I doubt many of you have seen this document, uh, but it was from 2004. Uh, the most recent downtown design standards were adopted in 2019, and I will just point out that the applicant did willingly um, agree to uh, comply with most of the current downtown design guidelines, but uh, in terms of review for objective quantifiable standards, we have to review for the downtown design guidelines from 2004. Uh, with regards to public outreach, uh, we've held multiple meetings on this project. Uh, the most recent one we held in uh, March of 2022, and that was a joint EIR scoping meeting as well as a, a community meeting. Um, with regards to CEQA, I'm going to pass it off to Rima, and she's going to give you a rundown on the environmental review portion of the project. So the city prepared a supplemental environmental impact report, and this was supplemental to the downtown strategy 2040 EIR. Uh, this slide gives the dates on which the city accomplished all of the environmental review procedures that we needed to do. If you could move to the next slide, please. The significant impacts of the project were related to nesting birds, construction, air quality, noise and vibration, and agricultural chemicals in the soil. 
There was one significant unavoidable impact related to cumulative noise impacts that was identified for the project. Even with the implementation of mitigation measures, this impact would remain significant because of all of the construction that is proposed for the downtown area. Next slide, please. Uh, the city received just one comment letter during the public comment period, and that was from Valley Water on the draft SEIR. Valley Water provided several clar clarifications to the text of the draft SEIR. Those clarifications were included as text changes to the draft SEIR in the First Amendment to the draft SEIR. Valley Water did not raise any new issues, and recirculation of the EIR was not required. A letter was received this morning from Lodzu Drury LLP, representing Laborers International Union of North America, Local Union 270, and its members living in the city of San Jose. Staff and city consultants have reviewed the letter and determined that the letter does not raise any new issues that rise to the level of requiring recirculation of the draft SEIR. The project's impacts brought up in the letter related to air quality, greenhouse gases, energy and noise impacts have been addressed fully in the draft SEIR. So with that, uh, staff recommends that the Planning Commission recommend to the City Council um, that they adopt a resolution certifying the environmental impact report and adopt a resolution approving the site development permit. Uh, and so with that, Concludes staff presentation, and the applicant is here. Thank you. And I don't think it's too often we have a project that was submitted before any of us were on the Planning Commission. Uh, all right, so yeah, we will now take five minutes for a presentation from the applicant. It's been a long evening already, so I just wanted to state that I'm here to answer any questions you may have on the project. The project is fully compliant with the general plan of the city of San Jose, and uh, we're delighted with the work uh, that we've shared with the planning department and the council district office and the mayor's office, and feel very good that we would be able to provide 210 additional residential units to the city of San Jose, and hope uh, for your recommendation of approval to city council so that after many years of process, we can move forward. Uh, hopefully the process will be expedited sometime in the future when uh, things are uh, changed a bit. Look forward to that day. Thank you so much for your time. And just to clarify, are you Sal Caruso? I apologize, yes I am. Okay, no, I just asked because I have your comment card. Yes. Um, okay, so that concludes your presentation? Pardon me? Does that conclude your presentation? Uh, yes it does and I'll be available for any responses if there's anything to rebut. Okay. Or if you have any questions, of course. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Do we have any members of the public who would like to give public comment on this item? This would be the time for it. Doesn't look like we do. So, um, Mr. Caruso, you have another five minutes if you'd like to speak, but otherwise we can just go to the commission. All right. He said no. All right. Uh, so we'll return to, if I can get my tablet back. Here we go. Okay, I see Commissioner Bickford, Commissioner Cantrell, and then Vice Chair Nels Wise. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have a question about the, the property itself, 40, 439 South 4th Street. Uh, are you the current owner of the building that is there? Or is this a, uh, it, are they, and, and are you demolishing your own building? I am the project architect, not the owner of the property. Sure. Uh, the owner of the property is the one who is presenting the project and uh, developing the site. Okay, one more question. Yes. I drove by. There's nothing 25 stories, like within a block or two. Yes, mm -hmm. it's part of, but it's, I feel like it's gonna look strange to have one 25 story do you have any view well on there will be two there's uh, okay. a recently approved project of comparable size directly next door that was approved about one Perfect. or two years ago yeah the project was called the mark um, i was the project manager and it's it is right next door yeah it is uh 20 plus stories yeah and and to be clear this area has been designated for high rise for 20 30 years now 
I was looking at it and yes. going. Yes, it'll it? have company. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Is that okay, Commissioner Cantrell? I'll keep this brief because we got partners to go home to. Um, what took so long? <laughs> Maybe a conversation for another day. Uh, just, Maybe I'll have uh, to buy you a drink. Is that it? Pro sure. <laughs> I could use one right about now. Oh. Uh, but uh, just, I think, uh, processes. Uh, I mean, staff has been fantastic. Alec has been fantastic to work with. Uh, he has been our consistent planner now for the, the, the home stretch, if you will. But we had gone through three or four planners before Alec. Uh, so there was a lot of changeover and changing and every time a planner changed it was sort of like starting over and with alec it's been consistently fantastic you know kind of getting us across the finish line uh that was not the case previously so that was quite frustrating to be honest so okay, okay. <laughs> and with that i'm actually going to move that we approve this project Second. Okay. all right we have a motion from commissioner cantrell to approve the staff recommendation I believe, and uh, second from Commissioner Oliverio. We'll continue discussion. Um, Vice Chair Arnold Wise. I have a question in regards to, um, I, I really like the design. I, I think both the architect and the staff have done a wonderful job. And I know Thank it's you. probably a lot of work to get here. And I think you'll provide a lot of relief housing for students and faculty for San Jose State. So I think that's fantastic. Um, I did have some safety concerns for the, the, the rooftop. I didn't know if there was, I saw when I was looking at the elevations, but I didn't see like a glass that was high enough. So I, I just wanted to know. There, there is glass that goes up higher uh, to provide safety for the rooftop activities. Uh, and it, just a little bit of background. One of the reasons why we are doing a rooftop activity is because San Jose is growing and evolving with time. We need to activate our rooftops to make them livable and part of our living experience, especially if you live in a high rise, having thousands and thousands of square feet of available airspace that you can actually get air from and see the city skyline is fantastic. I've been around for a long time. I actually sat here on the Planning Commission 30 plus years ago. <laughs> uh, so I, I saw, you know, sort of downtown form, the Fairmont Hotel built, the Convention Center built, all of these beautiful projects. And when Scott's Seafood was built, which was the first kind of rooftop at, I think, six or seven stories tall, that was kind of a big deal. And so now I'm excited to finally see these rooftop activities going up at 25, 26 stories so that we can finally have a skyline that's interesting and activated, right? We, we fight to activate our streets and our storefronts. We also fight to activate our rooftops. We have another project under construction, 120 units right now on Delmas in downtown San Jose, also with a full rooftop activated area, roughly 15,000 square feet of rooftop that'll be available for its residents. So places for people to come together, creating community spaces, outdoor community spaces, I guess. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. I hope other uh, developers model that. I really did like the pool. I wanted to see if there was any uh, play area for children. I saw in the staff report play area for the dogs, but I'd like to see a play area, you know, for the Also children. for children, having seven children and 10, almost 11 grandchildren now, uh, <laughs> there is also play activity for kids as well. Okay, good, good. That's what I like to hear. And what about energy efficiency of the building? Uh, the building, uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, it also is uh, LEED certified compliant. Uh, and is using all of the proper technology to be LEED certified. Background, uh, I designed the first LEED Platinum multifamily project in the state of California, and that was back in 2012, so a long time ago. It was the first one in the state, the fifth in the country. Okay, that's great. Everything <laughs> I wanted to hear. Approved. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Commissioner Tordillas and then Oliverio. Thank you. Uh, one quick question for the project applicant. Just wanted to verify that this is intended to be student housing? That's its primary purpose, yes. Student, faculty, et cetera. Awesome. I think much needed in this area. I was looking at some stats from San Jose State's uh, recent basic needs survey, 
and I think they reported that over 40% of San Jose State students reported experiencing housing insecurity, and over 11% yes. reported experiencing homelessness. So projects like this, very important, especially given that this project will be you know, subject to the Ellis uh, Act. So my understanding is either 50% of the units will need to continue to be rent stabilized or 20% uh, affordable units on site. Is that correct, Steph? You got it right, no notes. Awesome. Yeah, so I think this is a slam dunk project. I love yes. walking distance to this project. I walk past this site every day, getting coffee in the morning. I'm very excited to see this portion of downtown kind of expand and grow upwards. I had one final question uh, for staff, which is not about setbacks per se, but about windows. I noticed that between this project and its somewhat minimal side setback, and then the adjacent high rise, the mark with its even smaller setback, uh, that you know the adjacent windows will be something like 12 feet apart, I think. Is there any minimum uh, that we aim for in these sorts of projects? We, we really don't. We can't really regulate the location of windows. And frankly, a lot of that's regulated by the building code too for, um, I guess, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Well, I mean, we don't necessarily have a design guideline that says don't have your window face another high rise window in general. A lot of it has to do with ultimately construction design efficiency and other things. So we typically leave it at that stage. Sounds good, thank you. And my final comment here would just be on bike parking. Uh, I recognize in the staff report that we are providing more than you know the required amount of bike parking with this project, uh, but with the caveat that that is based on unit count and not bedroom count. Uh, if you look at bedroom count, it comes out to, I think, less than one bike parking space for every 10 bedrooms. So if there were any future changes to this project, we'd love to see some more bike parking, especially given that this is intended for students and it's so centrally located, surrounded by the downtown bike network. Uh, so that's my only comment, but otherwise, great project. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Oliverio? Yes, I just wanted to share, Commissioner Oliverio's wise, uh, there is a park with a great play area uh, two blocks away on Williams Street. So now it'll actually have people in it, hopefully. Um, and then the other factor is I probably passed this parcel six to 7,000 times in my life. And we've just been waiting for things to happen in the downtown since I was a toddler. Uh, just only hope that the financing comes through at some point. So thank you very much. Okay, I don't see any other hands up. So um, we'll go to the motion from Commissioner Cantrell with a second from Oliverio and have a roll call vote. Vice Chair Nellis Wise? Yes. Commissioner Barosio? Yes. Commissioner Bickford? Yes. Commissioner Cantrell? Yes. Commissioner Casey? Yes. Commissioner Garcia? Yes. Commissioner Oliverio? Yes. Commissioner Rosario? Yes. Commissioner Tordillas? Yes. Commissioner Young? Yes. Myself, yes. That's 11 yes, zero no, and zero abstentions. The motion passes. Okay, we'll move on to the final items of the agenda. Item six, referrals from city council boards, commissions, or other agencies. Do we have anything for that? No, we, we do not. Uh, good and welfare. Um, do we have a report from city council? Yes, we do. Uh, we, have, uh, we haven't had a land use item in city council for almost a month now. Uh, but yeah, this is from January 30th. And um, the city initiated rezoning of eight parcels to align with zoning designation in the general plan. Uh, PES 1 to SB 1333 was approved. And then uh, there was also an approval of ordinance repelling the application of affordable housing overview. The heroes that came through this commission was also approved on January 31st. So those two. Great, thank you. Um, subcommittee formation reports and outstanding business. I assume we don't have anything for that. Uh, okay, and then C, commission calendar and study sessions. I have a note here that We'll have a study session presenting the Envision San Jose 2040 General Plan 2023 Annual Report on March 13th, 2024 from 5 to 6 p.m. That's correct. Okay, uh, public record, nothing for that there. And we will adjourn this meeting at 8.08 p.m. Thank you for literally the entire commission showing up on Valentine's Day, I really appreciate it. Have a good night, everybody. It's because we love our city. <laughs> <laughs>